Welcome to the Science for the Public lecture series. Science for the Public is an organization committed to bringing science information and issues to the general public. Visit our website for our program listings and blog. Dr. Gong Chen is currently the Carl Richard Soderberg Professor of Power Engineering at MIT. He obtained his PhD from UC Berkeley in 1993, and he was a faculty member at Duke University and then UCLA before joining MIT in 2001. Professor Chen is a leading force in the field of nanoscale energy. He serves as the Director of Solid State Solar Thermal Energy Conversion Center, um, a DOE Energy Frontier Research Center. He's published extensively in the field of nanoscale energy transport and conversion and nanoscale heat transfer. And he co-founded a very big energy company, GMZ Energy. Dr. Chen has received many awards, among them the National Science Foundation Young Investigator Award, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers Heat Transfer Memorial Award, the R&D 100 Award, and MIT's McDonald Award for Excellence in Mentoring and Advising. Dr. Chen is a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and several other prestigious science organizations. He's also the chair of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers and serves as editor for several professional publications. It's a very big honor to welcome Professor Chen and to hear from him, one of today's foremost innovators in energy technology. Welcome, Dr. Chen. Thank you. And we're very pleased to have you here with us in downtown Belmont. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to <laughs> be here. Okay. You're accustomed to high-level audiences, I take it. And I, I, I'm used to speak to uh, the professionals in my same field, but uh, it's also really great, great pleasure to okay. have an opportunity to speak here. Uh, you have that opportunity now, and the public will appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, there's been quite a bit written about your innovation, and I wonder if you could explain to us a little bit about solar energy. For example, one of the best popular articles in The Economist um, called it the third way, and it talks about the three means of developing so solar energy, and this one, wh why was this one, you know, the third way, and likely to take over everything else, why it sort of didn't get started right away, and so on. But if you'll explain that to us and your uh, innovation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so probably uh, I could start uh, from uh, uh, the uh, energy scale. And uh, uh, if we uh, think about the, the current lead, the currently uh, the whole worldwide energy consumption, that's about the 13 terawatt, terawatts. Uh, that's a, a huge number. And uh, 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 the, uh, uh, by 2050, uh, the anticipation this number will be uh, doubling, so we'll get to, uh, we need another uh, 12 uh, to 15 terawatts. And it's a, it's a big challenge. Uh, to give an example, a uh, typical power plant uh, is about 2 gigawatts, 1 to 2 gigawatts. Uh, so uh, what I know is uh, uh, in China alone, uh, they will build about 100 power plants. Oh, so that's about 100 gigawatts a year. Yeah. And uh, now we need to another terawatt, which is right. uh, uh, ten, uh, say, uh, one terawatt is 10 to 12 watts. So uh, uh, one terawatt is 1,000 gigawatts. So that's the scale. Uh, it's the challenge we're facing. And uh, uh, of course, the other challenge we're facing is uh, as we burn more fossil fuels, the coal, mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, um, say, the uh, global warming problem. Right. And so the, uh, uh, the challenge is uh, how we can uh, use the renewables. Now if we uh, actually take a look at uh, uh, how much energy uh, really we have from the sun. 
and uh, uh, the solar energy is uh, about a thousand watt uh, per meter square. And uh, uh, now uh, the energy uh, reaching the sun uh, is about 10 to the fifth terawatts. So that's a uh, hundred uh, terawatts. And uh, 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 that's a, a very large number. And uh, um, uh, hundred thousand, I'm sorry, is a hundred thousand terawatts. So if we can just take, a, 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 let's say, one percent of that, <laughs> uh, that's already hundred. Uh, terawatts. So clearly, uh, the potential mm -hmm. of solar mm -hmm. energy is there, um, but uh, there are also challenges. And currently, uh, the way we are using uh, the solar power, there are two ways. Uh, one is uh, uh, the photovoltaic cells. Yes. Uh, that's uh, everybody is familiar. Uh, the uh, the other is uh, we concentrate the solar energy and generate steam. And that's the solar thermal uh, mechanical. Mm -hmm, so we mm -hmm. use the steam drive a steam turbine, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the uh, 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 both are used. And the uh, major challenge is how one can bring the cost down, uh, because uh, say ordinary uh, people uh, they will look at how much they pay monthly uh, to the electric grids, which supplies energy by mostly burning coals or natural gas. And uh, uh, the other is if we are renewable, uh, whether it's uh, uh, cost competitive or not. And it turns out uh, uh, right now, um, uh, the typical installed uh, solar, uh, power, uh, solar photovoltaic cells uh, is about uh, uh, $3 per watt. And uh, what does uh, uh, one watt mean? Mm -hmm. Is uh, mm -hmm. one watt per year uh, average speaking, may generate about uh, two kilowatt hours. Now, if you take your electric bill and take a look, and the one, say how much you, uh, you use, and you find about the one kilowatt hour uh, uh, is about the 10 cents, uh, and really in the power plant, it's five cents. After the uh, transmission and the utility, uh, it, we probably, I once checked uh, here, we see about 15 to 20 cents uh, kilowatt hour. Um, so now, uh, uh, the one watt of solar you put on the roof, photovoltaic cell put on the roof, is about uh, uh, $3, mm -hmm. okay? And then you can see now, if every uh, uh, watt of this per year is about two kilowatt hour, and that's about 20 cents. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's, it takes $3 uh, uh, to install one watt, and that will take like 15 years mm -hmm. to pay it back, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's a very long uh, time horizon, and uh, it's, uh, that's why they, uh, this clean energy technology, uh, it's uh, slow in permeating uh, into the household uh, because the price uh, is the most important. And uh, um, uh, so the, what we developed uh, is a, a way, um, uh, not using the thermal, uh, say, uh, photovoltaic, right. not using the big steam turbine, uh, which is a solar thermal, the current. Uh, we are developing something that can be uh, uh, used, uh, say, using the this uh, so-called thermal electric principle. And the thermal electric principle is, uh, uh, those are, um, uh, I'll pass this around, uh, you can see this is actually a commercial device. Hmm. This device, um, if uh, the current way to use it is you pass a current, mm -hmm. you actually create a cooling one side, the other side uh, heat. So uh, you can use it for small refrigerators and uh, uh, even in some of the car seats. And uh, on the other hand, if you apply a temperature difference, you can generate power. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I, I'll actually uh, show, and you can take a look at this. Yes. Uh, so what I have here uh, is a, a bigger device like that, and uh, I sandwich between a piece of copper and a piece of aluminum. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's about a millimeter thick. And when we uh, uh, light the fire and create a temperature difference, uh -oh. if I can open it. Yeah. And you'll see uh, we should be able to power up. Okay. 
So actually, uh, this is a, a relatively slow process as uh, this side heats up. Okay. And uh, you should look for uh, the uh, LED uh, to light up. And uh, 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 like I said, it will be a relatively slow process. And uh, later, later on, I'll explain this is uh, actually an advantage. So that's the, so the thermoelectric effect is when you have a temperature difference across uh, typically uh, semiconductor material, uh, you can generate a voltage. Okay. And currently people use that for uh, sensing, measuring temperature, uh, for example. Um, but uh, there are very uh, few application, terrestrial application to generate power. And uh, what we're developing is better materials so that the power generation is more efficient and uh, uh, also look into the, uh, uh, say, developing better applications. I see. Yeah. Uh, does this take a lot of heat to make it produce? So then? that is that been? Yes. Um, so this is related to the efficiency. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, so you can see uh, uh, it takes some time uh, to heat up, but also now there's no fire, and it takes some time. Uh, to cool down. Uh, it turns out this is a, uh, actually a really interesting feature uh, because uh, uh, when we have, or say if we do solar, when the clouds come uh, in a typical photovoltaic, uh, your electricity will be gone. Uh, and uh, in the case of heat, we can actually store this heat and uh, so delay that the power fluctuation which is a crucial right. uh, okay. for the uh, uh, power lines. Uh, you, uh, 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 were, you were asking the question, uh, um, can you repeat that again? Uh, that the, one of the difficulties with the thermoelectric, the, the, they've been able to use it, I understand, right. um, with, say, cars produce enough heat. The, the, I forget what it right. is. It's a, a yeah. 300C or something or other, whatever the heat is. But it's hard to get that mm -hmm. concentrated out of solar. So is uh, this adjusts for that? This this solves that problem, but I'm not sure how. Right. So the the challenge when we think about uh, uh, using uh, thermoelectric for solar is how we can create a temperature difference. Yes. And uh, if I put uh, uh, the device I was uh, uh, showing you, or this piece of device under the sun, uh, uh, I cannot create. Uh, uh, let's say 100 or 200 degree yeah. temperature difference. Right. Probably there is a best uh, uh, one degree temperature difference, yeah. right? So this is a heat engine. So the efficiency will be larger if I have larger temperature difference across uh, the device. Okay. And uh, this is when uh, we uh, benefited uh, from the existing solar hot water technology. And the solar hot water technology is a really interesting uh, technology. Uh, and I am bringing here a solar hot water tube. And, uh, and this tube uh, is uh, uh, widely used in China, in Europe, uh, in the uh, Middle East. Um, and what it is, is actually a vacuum inside. And you can see the front surface, when you face the sun, it looks black. And this is actually similar to some of photovoltaic cells. And uh, this surface, uh, uh, is a, the black is a coating on the copper uh, uh, piece. So, uh, and in the center is a, a water channel here. So inside is a vacuum. When the sun comes to the surface, is absorbed, mm -hmm. and the heat, there's no way to go. Of course, yeah. uh, you will have yeah. some re-radiation, yeah. so the surface is very important to do the surface well so to minimize the heat the by re-radiation. Right. Right. But there's no air inside, so the heat is forced to go through the copper laterally into the central copper. Uh -huh. That's the, what they call the, uh, we can call this a thermal concentration, right? They, they uh, re really laterally force the heat to flow from a larger surface to a small uh, area. And uh, 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 this is, a, uh, like I said, a widely used. And the efficiency of this 
from a solar heat to the household heat is about 60 to 70 percent. Uh, so it's actually, uh, from a heat perspective, uh, is very efficient. And uh, uh, so we, uh, uh, this deploy, this is uh, why they deployed, I said, uh, uh, I give example in China alone, uh, they have 120 million square meter, million. So that means it's a cheap technology, right? If you, mm -hmm. if you have this deploy in mm -hmm. China, mm -hmm. India, developing country, you know it's cheap. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a good example where people are using solar energy and uh, 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 making, say, changing daily life. And I know this personally because I grew up in China and when I was a kid there was not, nothing like this. So uh, you can't take a hot shower uh, in the winter. But uh, so it's, it's life changing. And so the, we benefited from this and then we say, okay, now I'm going to take the uh, uh, material. Can I have mm -hmm. that piece back, mm -hmm. right? So there are, there are about, uh, uh, say, 120 pairs, uh, 120 legs. Uh, so uh, I have a lot of those legs. Okay. And because of uh, a lot of those material, I cannot create a large temperature difference. Mm -hmm. So what uh, I'm doing in this uh, uh, solar thermoelectric generator is uh, I still have this absorber as already in hot water. And then I uh, put, a, say, on the whole area, I only have a six pairs. In this area, I have more than, say, uh, uh, say 120 legs. So it's about 60 pairs. Here I only have six pairs. So each of, so this while lifted the absorber about a millimeter above. Mm -hmm. So now heat is forced to go flow through a much smaller area of the this leg, and because of that, I can create a two hundred degree temperature difference uh, between this absorber and this copper tube. And uh, then say this leg, these two legs, um, in this, and like I said, the whole area is about six pairs, uh, the generator. Mm -hmm. So the, the beauty of this is I use a very small amount of material and I generate electricity and the rest of the heat I'm going through to the household for the hot water. So now I have a system that I can provide uh, hot, hot water and the electricity at the same time. But it sounds like almost like a little thought experiment that uh, it was just a clever idea. Uh, Why? It's, it's very clever. So it was, a, say, uh, it's actually many years of research. First, uh, <laughs> we, we work a lot on these materials, how we can make mm -hmm. materials better. And uh, so you can see if I want to create a temperature difference, uh, I want this material to be a heat insulator. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm -hmm. otherwise the heat leaks from this side to the mm -hmm. other side. Right. And yet I want this material to be a good electric conductor because uh, I'm, uh, say, generate current, I don't want to have resistance there. And so uh, this requirement of a good thermal in heat insulator and yet at the same time is a good heat, uh, say, electrical conductor are very difficult. Yes. And this is where uh, we started using this nanotechnology, where uh, the material itself uh, doesn't look nano, but what we do is uh, we crush those materials into nanoparticles, and then we recompact them into the same material that we, you're saying. Ah, I see. <laughs> so in the process, we create a lot of interfaces in the material. And this interface reflects heat because the heat is essentially sound waves, very high frequency mm -hmm. sound waves. And so we, we know you can go into a cave when you say you hear this reflection. So that's the same principle when we have a lot of interface in this material, uh, we make the material more heat insulating. And of course we have to uh, watch out so that we don't ruin the charge, the electrical mm -hmm. uh, uh, conduction. 
So that's uh, how we're using nanotechnology to improve the materials. It's very clever. That's very, but you. you said it took a lot of years uh, to get there. It sounds so, so elegant and, and straightforward, but. That's the nature of research. Right. <laughs> Sometimes uh, after many years, I say, you say, I should have taken that way many years ago. <laughs> but uh, we're relieved to know that it took a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. Okay. Almost never, uh, uh, seldom we have an idea that will work. Uh, the when first you go to the time. Lab. Yeah. The first time. Right. Okay. And you have other things to tell us with the with you had some slides about the the process or something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, what uh, uh, I thought uh, would be uh, you asked the question the efficiency, right? Yes. And uh, why uh, we uh, see the uh, 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 we cannot get a very high efficiency. So uh, first, uh, if you we all drive cars, and it turns out the automobile efficiency is less than twenty percent. Yes, that's amazing, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the power plant efficiency is about forty percent. Better ones could get to even 45, and uh, if you combine with the uh, uh, gas turbine, you can even get a 60 percent. So, uh, but see, the theory say we should be able to get to 80, even you know, 90 percent. Fundamentally, we cannot convert all heat into work or <laughs> electricity. <laughs> that's a, that's a, the second law of thermodynamics, <laughs> right? And uh, uh, what, what, what it really says, uh, I know that uh, my son high school, they learned this sort of concept is entropy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, entropy is a randomness. So heat has a randomness inside. Mm -hmm. And when you take a heat from, let's say, a combustion chamber, and uh, uh, you try to drive a turbine you know, or, you, uh, uh, or piston, mm -hmm. And uh, that's a work, right? The mechanical motion or electrical is a work. Work cannot carry randomness. Mm -hmm. So uh, that randomness has to go somewhere. That's why we have to reject uh, some of the heat <laughs> to the ambient. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is a, so this randomness, if you do well, you don't create more randomness. Mm -hmm. But in the car, we know there is a friction or this uh, other things. This friction created more randomness. Mm -hmm. So we have less efficiency, and we have to reject more heat uh, to the ambient. So the difficulty uh, in converting heat into useful work, or electricity, or mechanical work, is uh, how to minimize the generation of additional randomness. And uh, uh, so that's in general. And now say, what's the difficulty uh, with the photovoltaic? Photovoltaic, take a silicon as an example. Silicon, uh, say, uh, is a semiconductor. Right. So the sun energy comes in, uh, 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 it actually came from uh, Einstein many, many years ago, that the, uh, the, the, the light is also a particle, mm -hmm. right? So what the solar energy comes uh, you can think of this, we call them photons, and they have different uh, wavelengths, all right? We, we say different color. Mm -hmm. Different color means different energy. Mm -hmm. So each of this uh, uh, photon as a particle that has certain energy. And when he a photo will take a silicon, and if the energy of this photon is less than this semiconductor. By name, a semiconductor is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a semiconducting, right? So what it has is a, a band gap. It's mm -hmm. a gap, energy mm -hmm. gap. Mm -hmm. So if the photon energy is less than this gap, you cannot generate, you cannot lift the electron from a lower energy to the higher mm -hmm. energy because the photon mm -hmm. energy is not enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, so if we just think about that, in the case of uh, silicon, uh, the solar energy comes in, there are about 25% of that energy cannot use because uh, those photons do not have enough energy to lift the electron from across this gap, mm -hmm. okay? And the other difficulty is some of the energy 
of the photon is too high. Mm. And uh, so this is, this is the gap I say, okay, that's the energy. Now if the energy of this photon is higher than this gap, what happens is the excess energy, that's the, let's say this is the excess energy, right. they quickly convert into mm -hmm, heat. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a chance to take them out as the electricity, they already convert into heat. Right. So that again counts for another about 30%, uh, no, actually 90% of this excess energy is gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so if you do uh, say 70 times 90, uh, um, it's about 50%, right? And now you have a charge here, you have a another say left uh, behind the uh, uh, opening that's what we call hole, you got the electron, you got the hole, and uh, you try to take them out. Mm -hmm. But the, each of them are also have randomness. You right. cannot take all of that out. Right. So you get another by the say 70%. So all of to, together you multiply, you get a, at the best case in the silicon, you can convert 30% of the solar energy into electricity. That's what the theory says. And in fact, uh, people have done pretty well, they can do 25, 26% in, mm -hmm. in the lab. Right. In the field, it's uh, deployed as only 15 to 18 percent because of the manufacturing and also really the cost. Right. Uh, you don't want to make it too complicated and the cost is too high. Exactly. So it's really a challenge developing this kind of energy, although there's so much of it. Right. Capturing it and utilizing it is another thing altogether. Yeah. But now you have the solution. So. <laughs> I, I would like to emphasize this is a providing alternative. Mm -hmm. we, at this stage, we are actually not saying we're going to replace the right, other technology. Right, right. Uh, uh, what we're hoping is, for example, when we combine with hot water, mm -hmm. uh, we have a much better solution uh, right. uh, than just provide household hot, hot water. Right, right. It's actually also interesting you mentioned the, um, uh, the, the energy density, right? Because uh, this is another important problem. Uh, uh, if we think about one kilogram of gasoline, right? One kilogram of gasoline has about a 45 megajoule of energy, okay? And uh, uh, so if I put a one meter of silicon photovoltaic cell on the roof for one year, uh, that's the equivalent to two tanks of gas, oh. like each tank 15 right. gallon. Right. So this is, the gasoline, that's why all those fossil fuel people like it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's convenient, right? It's right. high energy density. Right. Uh, the solar energy is clean, but you have to have a large area. And right. so, so, so at the end, you have to have low cost to cover the large area to get that adoption. Right. Yeah. But a lot of people like you are working on technologies to really improve this. And it sounds as though you've got something here which can capture a great deal. It's definitely something that will be more widespread, I'm sure. Did you have some material you wanted to show us about the, some, some information you wanted to show us about how this all works? Uh, do you mean the, the on your so, slides? On the yes. slides, the, yes. No, it's fine. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I I actually have uh, say uh, the slide. Oh, the so this this was essentially what I was saying that yeah. say the when we when we try to convert uh, a heat take a heat uh, uh, to work, we cannot convert all heat into work, right? That's because the heat carries some randomness. That's the entropy. And if you generate entropy friction, you have to actually reject the more entropy to the cold side. Yeah. And this entropy is heat. Entropy times temperature is heat. So that's why you have to reject some of heat to the ambient. You can never convert 100% heat into work. So the maximum is, uh, this is a so-called color limit. The maximum efficiency you can get is uh, say the temperature of the cold divided by temperature of hot, one month step. So 
the larger is the temperature difference, the higher is the efficiency. Ah, so, uh, so if you got this above 300, um, uh, if you got it above 300, you'd increase the yeah. efficiency more. This, right. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is a, this is ah, a, this yes. is a, the limit there. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, all the energy heat to electricity conversion uh, is below that limit. You yes, see, the, way the best, the best is the power plants, about 40, 45 okay. percent, right? And uh, uh, photovoltaic is actually wide range. You can say. Uh, from organic solar cell people developing uh, to silicon uh, a single junction is about 30 percent and then people put a say a lot of semiconductor I said silicon is this this is a minimum energy yeah. but if you put a different semiconductor with a different gap then you can stack them this form the so-called multi-junction cell and there people actually have reached about 41 percent so that's very impressive. Uh, the problem is the cost is everything because as uh, ordinary people, when we install it, we look at how much it costs us. Absolutely. Right? So that's the. Right. So this is uh, this is uh, what uh, uh, I was explaining the efficiency. Uh, 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 let's see, uh, that's what I say. A photon comes in, it generate uh, lift uh, uh, electron from here to here across the gap. And, but see, if the excess energy, they have to dump quickly. Right. They, 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 you can't, we, we, don't, we don't have technology capture that yeah, excess right, yet. Right, And so essentially, this part of the solar spectrum is lost. And even, it's only, we're only using this red part, even though there are a lot of energy there. And that's why I say you quickly get to about 30%. Right. Or a typical solar share, that's the, that's the limit. Right. What would be your guess for if you had the very best technology, you, you have a sense of the trend in this and, the, and the, the capability down the line. What do you think would be the maximum ha, potential? This, this is actually history. Uh, uh, different uh, photovoltaic technology. Much but, of it at MIT. <laughs> uh, a lot of it at MIT, but also really this is uh, yeah. worldwide. Worldwide. Okay. worldwide. In <laughs> fact, uh, uh, in photovoltaic, uh, the some of the records come from uh, like Australia. Oh, oh yeah, they, yeah. they, 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 they have a long time uh, investment. But see, what's interesting is I said this. This is this is DOE goal, mm -hmm. uh, Department of Energy goal. And uh, this is a year, uh, in 2004, it cost $8 to install one watt of a photovoltaic cell. And uh, uh, now it's about $3, mm. 10 years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And uh, uh, what DOE really wanted to say, if we want to be competitive against the uh, coal combustion or the, uh, the, the fossil fuels, we need to get a one dollar uh -huh. per install watt. So uh -huh. there is uh -huh. still a factor of three to go, and uh, uh, you have to do it fast. So that's the. But it's coming down fast. It's coming down fast, and uh, I was at a, a DOE meeting and I met a say, uh, solar installer, and what they say, it take him twenty five cents to just get the paperwork done. Ah. You see, get all the permits, get right. all the, uh, uh, right. so now if you want to drop to one dollar. Exactly, you got to uh, add some of these other the, things. All the labor, all Except the racking. Of of so this system is actually including both, you see here, the, the a solar cell, including a photovoltaic module itself, and then inst including installation. The, the uh, racking, the steel. Yes, sure, and, sure. Uh, so that's very challenging. Exactly, I un un understand. But already in, in some countries in Europe, for instance, which certainly can't have better sun than we have, except in Spain, which has really developed a right. lot of solar. But they, the, they've actually, people are able to sell back to the grid, right? Mm -hmm. It's put them in, and so that investment up front is already paying back maybe earlier than they thought. Is that true in your mind? Yeah, that's uh, particularly in uh, Germany. Right? Yes, So Germany exactly. is, uh, is not just exactly like what you said, yeah. not better than us in, in exactly. this Exactly. 
but they, they have very good government policy incentive. Yes. This they call this is a feed-in tariff. So uh, the farmers actually make money yes. in store this. They sell to the grid, and they don't use their own. They they get the cheap electricity from grid. They generate electricity from the solar, and they make a profit out yes. of it. Yes, there's and a way of thinking. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the benefit is that create jobs. Yes, they create technology. Yes. They create jobs. Right. So uh, 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 unfortunately, uh, uh, in U.S., we don't have the mentality uh, that, 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 that policy, right? So right. It, it is a say, the, uh, much tougher job uh, to create this industry and uh, uh, to sustain. And yes. that's why a few weeks ago you heard the startup like Sonindra, yes. right? They, they, they took a lot of, uh, say, uh, the government loan at the end, and they went bankrupt. Yes, yeah. but that that's a well. That's probably going to happen somewhere anyway. But that the policies in some of these countries has been to subsidize the industry. I believe that Massachusetts was subsidizing people who would take on the you know at least the solar panels or something. But it may need to be a partnership, perhaps. But one of the things I'd like to ask about this is it seems as though. It makes a very localized um, power, uh, I mean electrical and heat power. And that means that if you, you know, some of the blackouts that have occurred in this country, uh, these are catastrophic. Is So you think of New York going dark, this is not fun, and it can happen. So, and we buy a lot of electricity from Canada and so on. Well, if you had this kind of a setup, and I'm not sure, but it sounds as though your house and that house, that you could be quite independent. So if somebody goes dark, there's somebody else right around the corner that can help. You don't have a shutdown of hospitals and everything else. Is that the, the case? Is that a possibility down the line that this would be self-contained? This is a really, you, you had a very shrewd observation. And in fact, that's the promise of a lot of those distributed generation systems from photovoltaic to thermoelectric. Yes. And uh, what could potentially uh, uh, say lead to uh, is the distribute power, and uh, but there are also technical challenges that needs to be solved. One is the smart grid. So there are a lot of countries, including U.S., are developing smart grid. So the, uh, 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 by that is, is uh, it's probably at this stage it's very hard just to say you're completely off grid. Yes. So what they need is an uh, uh, electric grid that can handle this uh, U-generate power, oh, I generate I power, right. and uh, uh, and they say uh, so. So uh, in fact, the U.S. Uh, uh, grid, current grid, can take some of this, but uh, you cannot take too much. So if you got uh, everybody is generating, and this could actually create the problem to the current grid. <laughs> A yeah. different kind of a blackout, right. is that it, that we're but, firing uh, see, that's, it back? That's why you need the research in that. <laughs> yeah. The right. other is, uh, say, if you say completely off-grade, then you need a good storage. And uh, uh, because of the electricity you generate is during daytime, and uh, uh, in household you use the, the most during nighttime. And uh, so you need to store that electricity. Of course, the battery is a solution, yes. but say the cost is very high. So you have to uh, uh, work on reducing the cost of energy storage. Right. Do you see this as a trend in any case? Now, you're presenting logical problems here, but of course that's the case with all technologies, right, as they get started. And then, you know, 10 years, that because of the acceleration of the technologies themselves, then the cost would go down. Some of these problems might be solved, uh, at, but then the benefits might be enormous. But do you see this as simply the way things Things are going to go anyway in the future. It's inevitable. Or are we uh, up against the fossil fuels? This is a, a, a really very interesting question. And uh, uh, I was not here in the 70s, but say uh, some people may remember in the 70s, right? <laughs> at the, in the, this uh, uh, energy crisis. Yes. 
and uh, uh, there were, uh, uh, say, a lot of research mm -hmm. uh, in photovoltaic and in, in the renewable energy. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, when the um, uh, energy crisis uh, uh, was gone, uh, the research right. uh, investment uh, was gone. So uh, 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 what I want to point out is, uh, I think I say in the long run, this is definitely the solution, right? Because uh, uh, we eventually will burn out uh, the resource, uh, fossil resources. But how long that take, uh, uh, we don't know. And what really is the major driver now for energy is, is the climate change. Yes. Because you see, we have to reduce yes. the CO2 uh, emission. And what's needed is, uh, is the uh, long-term uh, uh, policy towards research, energy research. If you compare U.S. and Japan, yes. and uh, Japan has about a quarter of their R&D budget in energy research. Mm -hmm. We probably have one or two percent uh, of the R&D budget, in, just uh, say, uh, very, very low. It's been cut back, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, of course, the, the, the recent years we saw uh, surge in energy research. Yeah. But uh, say, uh, that's uh, yesterday I was in talk given by uh, Steve Kooning. Uh, he is the undersecretary at DOE. And uh, the uh, dollar amount uh, overall is still very small. Yes. And uh, also the danger is the long term, right? So the energy is actually the improvement in efficiency is pretty slow. Yeah. And you have to have sustained investment uh, in, the, uh, in the energy research. Uh, it's a much larger barrier uh, than, let's say, internet technology. Yes, like going I into the market. right. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, I was uh, talking to a lot of VCs, I said, uh, you know what I'm worried because at the time we see putting all the money in the photo will take. I said I'm, I'm worried about five years later uh, whether you'll still be putting money into mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. and that's the current situation because uh, the reality is uh, it's very hard for the green energy company to be profitable, and uh, 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 so you need a long term uh, have a long term investment uh, uh, severe there. On the other hand, these uh, countries, you mentioned China, uh, it's a huge population. Uh, certainly a number of Asian countries, Japan, Korea, and so on, they don't have any resources, so that they'd be very encouraged to take the leap to make this long-term investment. Uh, from, and in Europe, there seems to be an inclination that way too, although Spain has, I don't know what their thing is, but they have a lot of sun and they've done the solar justice for sure. Right. But the, uh, the, the, the incentive seems to be there elsewhere, as, as if I follow it correctly, in all developed nations, all the leading economies, we're still the shy ones, but what would it take to to get us moving in the right direction here. And, and I'd like to add to that that uh, we need, I think the public uh, is probably increasingly aware of the importance of the R&D, that it has to be extended you, or else people get lopped off right in the middle of a process that may take a number of years and labs cannot shut down in right. the middle of this. You really lose everything. Right. So what would it take to get us to this point? Do we have to simply run out of oil? <laughs> So I, I, that's a very uh, important question, and uh, uh, I, uh, I think there are uh, many factors. Um, one is, uh, as a technologist, uh, I view my responsibility is in the innovation, technology mm -hmm, innovations, mm -hmm. uh, so advanced basic science and advanced technology. But see, also uh, energy is such a complicated problem, and it is essentially is a commodity, right? Energy commodity is the lowest wins, lowest price mm -hmm. wins. Um, uh, so uh, here uh, we really need uh, see uh, the uh, government policy. Yeah. And uh, as an ordinary citizen, uh, I think uh, uh, if everybody is given pressure. 
right. uh, because uh, see, we're a democratic society, and if we have enough voice, the, yes, the politician exactly, needs it. Exactly. And uh, 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 the challenge, of course, uh, uh, is that, uh, for example, I come from China, I know them very well, and uh, the, uh, uh, the local government, in fact, uh, not necessarily the central government, in China, the local government has very strong competition, so they want to have their local industry, <laughs> right? So they compete and yeah, they put in money, other. and those company grew very fast. The mm -hmm. solar company is uh, uh, industry in China is a great example. A uh, few years back, uh, I had a, say uh, 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 somebody in my lab, and he was telling me the richest person in China is a, a photovoltaic There person. you go. <laughs> I said, how could that be possible? I didn't even know China had a photovoltaic industry. <laughs> Just that 10 years, right. now they right. became dominant because yeah. the, 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 this uh, government incentives help a lot. Exactly. And that creates jobs. It, that's the other part. It yeah. creates jobs and, and uh, it's uh, good of you to mention that because right. it's uh, booming jobs right. in the whole right. industry just generally. So there is a huge promise in all of this. I wish you the absolute best with your wonderful um, innovation here and I would recommend to the audience you go to our website. I've listed a number of articles that are for us, for general readers, and uh, uh, describes this innovation very nicely. I'm so glad he brought it with him. I thought, just that big, how that we could do all of that. But I know that you have questions you'd like to ans ask. We did not set up a microphone. No matter what we do with mics, it never works. So I will ask Dr. Chen to please, and you should feel entirely relaxed about this, uh, but I'll ask him to repeat uh, the question and then I will type it on the screen when I do the edit so that you can see it. But if we could do that, if you would not mind repeating the question, then I can hear it, then I can type it, and then you can see it. And I will uh, turn it over uh, then for questions and answers. Dr. Chen, thank you so much for Pleasure. joining us. Pleasure, thank you. Thank you. And please just go right ahead. I think he can see you if you raise your hand. I see Maria. I have a question. If these long uh, solar collectors are so inexpensive and used widely in India and China <laughs> and the Middle East, as you explained, why are we not using them here? They're cheap, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here is cost. Absolutely. So this is a, uh, a puzzle I have too. And I uh, ask it wrong because in China, uh, this solar hot water system, a family installed, is about three hundred dollars. So that's it's it's uh, it's about uh, only uh, here is about four thousand uh, dollars installed. And uh, I I think the there uh, um, several issue. Uh, one one issue I, I I was told is because this is a, a vacuum system. So it could break. So if it, in China it breaks, they just put the, somebody else to replace a tube. And here it breaks, you got a lawsuit. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so that, that you, you need a lot uh, more expensive, make this, uh, say this will cost more, ex uh, say, co uh, say increase the cost. Secondly is the installation. Uh, there's not a working force uh, that uh, very proficient in installation. Uh, the startup we have GMZ Energy. When we try to install a solar hot water system, it took workers a few days. And uh, uh, in uh, China, uh, and it's uh, just a uh, uh, just few hours. Because why? The, why is there such a difference? People here can't learn. Uh, <laughs> no, because it's a it's a it's an industry that's not there, right? So you don't you need it you need it to have the business opportunity. Then you have people, more people get trained. So uh, I guess uh, um, it takes time. I, I just don't know when the US uh, you, uh, you, you were permitted. I was, in fact, also talking to, I remember I was talking a big glass industry. I said, why don't you do it? And uh, they said, we can't make money. It's too cheap. Uh -huh. Where can we buy these? 
Uh, Go to China. We can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, actually, locally there are there 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 is a, there is a company. Um, uh, I I can send me email. I can give you the. I'll make, the yes, I'll make sure if he doesn't mind, I'll yeah. put his email address. Well, actually, it's all probably on the website anyway. Yeah. But that's a wonderful idea. And then we can have some citizens that will simply raise their voices a little more. I think this is probably right. This is what needs to be done, that the, the voice of the people has to be heard a little more right. uh, forcefully because we don't know what we could have is we just are not aware of it. We have a few minutes left here to take a few more questions, then I'll have to stop, but then you can talk to him some more. I just need to stop the tape at that point. Quick, go ahead. I'll repeat his question if you would. Yes. Well, since you said the, the greater the, the heat difference, the more energy you generate. Right. Has any thought been given to uh, focusing the ah, glass? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, so the question is, uh, say, um, if the larger is the temperature difference, uh, um, uh, then you can focus and create a higher temperature. That's an excellent question. And uh, 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 the, as the first step, what we consider is uh, how we can be cost effective. Because uh, the, uh, the current uh, so, uh, forecasting system, you need a tracking. You need a say mechanical. Oh, yes. You need a big frame to do tracking, and that increases the cost. Uh, so we saw that this one is just a planner. So in fact, uh, uh, we do this uh, by heat conduction. So the thermal focus, we can. This focus is about 200 times. Well, optical trough in the power plant there is typically 60 times. Mm -hmm. So uh, the beauty of this way doing it is. Uh, we have a flat panel and then we use a very little material because we still focus, right? By, it's just a lot of optical focus. But having said that, it actually, see, we have model and uh, we're, we're thinking whether there's a, uh, uh, the reality will be favorable if we do focus. Uh, we haven't reached the conclusion yet. So that's part of the research we're still working on. Thank you. Yeah, we'd like to. Absolutely. Excellent question. Could you uh, repeat it? Uh, so the question is, uh, will it also work if you have, uh, if the other side get colder, right? And uh, for example, put uh, uh, into a freezer. Um, uh, uh, so uh, the principle of thermoelectrics is any time you have a temperature difference, you can generate power. Uh, of course, uh, say you don't want to put it in so inside your refrigerator because uh, you put a lot of electricity into your refrigerator to make that cold. But there are applications that uh, we actually have been thinking, for example, uh, in uh, uh, say uh, this uh, uh, liquid, uh, liquefied electric gas, right? That's cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you can think about uh, uh, whether you can recover some of the energy uh, that's uh, say used to make that code. So excellent question. I saw the other. Uh, Is there any written information that's available to us on this? Can you repeat it? Is there any written information uh, on this? Uh, yes, we do. We have uh, publications, and in fact, I'll give a copy of the slides. Yes. Uh, and right. uh, 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 and if you need more information, send me an email. I'll be happy to provide. Okay, that it? All right. Dr. Chen, thank you so much for visiting with us. I really appreciate it. You can talk to him again a little more. A little thank more you, informally. my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice.